We have Freddie Jackson in the house, and the courts are still trying to sort out Prince's estate. Stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I am Onika McLean. And I'm Courtney Rashawn. Yes, the candidates are coming to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Our former first lady uh, and Democrat presidential uh, candidate, Hillary Clinton, will be at the commencement, will be the commencement speaker for uh, Mega Evans, right? Okay. And then guess who else? Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is going to be the commencement speaker for Book Brooklyn College. So that's good, right? Yeah, it should be interesting. Go Brooklyn! Could actor Idris Elba be the next James Bond? Many people are still holding out and hope that he will. And, and some are talking about uh, the words of the director Ridley Scott from his interview on BBC Radio 1 that Elba just might be the next James Bond. Scott stated, Idris is pretty much becoming a national treasure for every country. We couldn't have done it without him. It was a pleasure. He's a gentleman. I can't wait to see him as James Bond, quite frankly. I mean, I'm not sure if he's a gentleman because, you know, he was um, he was hitting... Um, <laughs> Uh, K. Michelle. So I don't know about that book. Okay, I'm good for you, Idris. Mm. Well, I guess they I associate with him being an, uh, being an Englishman, you know, mm -hmm. being British with being a gentleman. Yeah, so okay. it's like synonymous with being a gentleman. But it should be interesting to see, um, you know, Idris play James Bond. You know, he definitely has the looks and the charisma. Well, the Minnesota courts have whittled Prince's potential heirs down to six, including his sister, Tika Nelson, and five half-siblings, si half and discredited several outrageous claims of connections to the late pop star. The court is still in the process of appraising all the properties and vehicles, gold, bars, music, vaults containing unreleased music. You know, he owned his masters and things of that nature. Um, talking all of those into the, taking, excuse me, taking all of that into account, Prince's estate could be worth up to $300 million. And that's it before taxes. That's it? That's I'm it. I'm surprised <laughs> that it's not more than that, Prince. I mean, Like, that's... Michael Jackson's estate is like a billion dollars or something crazy like that. Well, I know he has, well, Michael Jackson owns the, I believe he owns the catalog, the Beatles catalog. Right. Mm -hmm. Um... But, yeah, I mean, that's still a lot of money for his siblings to fight over. I mean, you know, just reselling his unreleased music itself will generate income. Yeah. You know, and all his Prince memorabilia, and you could just imagine what he has over there in Minnesota. I'm just, uh, maybe that's just a low ball figure. That's what I'm thinking. So congratulations are in order. I do not want to mess up her name. So I'm thinking it's Infuma White Thorpe. So she's a senior from Rockaway High School in uh, Morris Hill, New Jersey. She got accepted to all eight Ivy League schools and nice. Stanford University. Congratulations. Good for her. Congratulations. She wants yes. to study biology. Good for her. And I'm um, going to the, go into the global health field. So we're going to have an, another scientist, another innovator. Good for you. What, go where the money is. Go where the money is. That's what you could do. Exactly. And mm -hmm. she got to all the schools. That's awesome. Good. So I attended the Dress for Success uh, annual gala on the red carpet with Joy Gordon. And that's she's the CEO of Dress for Success. Karma Rita Wong, who's also a board member. Uh, Miss USA, Deshauna Barber, fashion designer Nicole Miller, and so many other people. Uh, Jay Manuel was there. I mean, there was like a host of people. Estelle performed, which was awesome. What did um, she sing? She sang uh, Conqueror. Oh, nice. Oh, it nice. was it was just so moving. Um, there were a lot of women there that gave their testimony and just expressed uh, how Dress for Success was able to, you know, uh, help them re-enter the workforce, you know, looking appropriately and dressing appropriately and feeling good about themselves. So it was definitely a um, an interesting charity where they really touched the lives of a lot of young women, you know, going back into the workforce. There were people there who gave their testimony just coming home from jail and didn't have anything to wear and who were basically given a second chance um, but wanted to look the part going back into the workforce and you know making a difference and they wanted to feel good about themselves so dress to success is a worldwide organization and um they've helped so many people so it was it was just really really awesome and the founder nancy lublin was also honored um during the event just you know for um just her innovation starting it up in a church basement and watching it grow um all over the world so mm -hmm. it was it was really an awesome event i was definitely touched good yeah good, good. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. And even as a crack queen mama, you always was a black queen mama. <laughs> Tupac, I love Tupac. So, so Tupac is being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's awesome. Yeah. 
yes. And um, so Snoop Dogg, it, well, it happened at the Barclays Center because everything happens in the BK at this point. So Snoop Dogg was, um, his honor gave an honorary tribute to him, right? And just listen to this How quote. How appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, Snoop Dogg, right? Because yeah. that was his that was his man. Okay, yeah. so cool. And I quote, when I sat down to gather my thoughts about my label mate, my homie, my brother, there was one thought that kept coming back to me. That Tupac was an actual human being. Snoop Dogg said, while everyone now thinks of him as some thugged out superhero, Tupac was many things. Strong and vulnerable, hard headed and intellectual, revolutionary and oh yeah. Don't get it messed up. A gangster, end quote. <laughs> Yay, Tupac! My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. We have Freddie Jackson in the house. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Well, I am so excited. We have a very special guest in the studio. The one and only, the legendary Freddie Jackson. Thank you for being here. It is my pleasure to be here with your beautiful smiles, <laughs> face and your audience. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you so much. For those who don't know, why don't you tell us a little background about yourself? Uh -huh. Where you're from, how you got started in the music industry? How I got started in the music industry, where I'm from, I'm born and raised in the village of Harlem, New York Harlem, City. Harlem, USA. St still live in Harlem, as <laughs> awesome. a matter of fact. Yeah, it's, it's important for me to stay close to my roots. Um, uh, born and raised in Harlem, I'm a child of uh, five. Uh, my mother's from Gaston, Alabama, so I've got some Alabama blood in me. Um, I, I am a protege of the Apollo Theater. I, oh. I snuck into the Apollo every Saturday and I saw some of the greatest and the best there. I, I consider the, the Apollo Theater to be my college, my education. Necking, um, we're talking about Sam Cooke and, mm -hmm. and Otis Redding and Donny Hathaway, they were my professors, I call. Um, but my love of singing started in church as a child. And uh, my mother was actually pregnant with me and uh, she went into labor. 12 hours later, here comes Freddie. Oh. So my mother, <laughs> unfortunately, I lost her five years ago, but she used to make a joke. She said, you better have been able to sing Stop of My Song, <laughs> you know. But I carried it, and uh, the church and singing in church is my love and my heart and still is to this day. But my heart and my passion belongs on any song because my rhythm and my blues and my gospel it lives with, within me, so I, I, I love my music. So how did you know that you wanted to take your passion and your love and make it your career? Well, how did you know that you wanted to share that and not just keep it as something that was you know, fulfilling just to yourself? I love the reaction of people when I sing. Uh, be it gospel, I like to make them shout, I like to make them cry. Be it R&B and singing love songs, I like to see people's emotion. When I walk out on stage and I begin to sing a song like You Are My Lady and I see a gentleman grab his lady's hand yeah. or put his hand around her, his, his arm around her, and to see that type of emotion and that compassion, it just makes, it thrills me because if a song or a voice or a sound could make you that comfortable, I think that's a great place to be in your life. And so for me, Growing up in church, I was the one who was des designated to make them shout. Oh, okay. You know? But <laughs> when I grew older and started seeing secular music, now I'm the man to bring you to love and oh. to put things in order and into place, <laughs> yes. right? So I went from the pew to the, the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but the baby making music, the baby right? Making, right, 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 right. But I knew my passion was in music um, just just growing up and uh, being on the streets of Harlem, standing on the street corners with friends and singing and uh, loving, loving the adoration that I would get back after I finished this song. Yeah. And uh, it's always been my love and I, 
pray to God that it will continue to be. Yes, can you take me back <clears throat> to your first record deal? My first record deal, Capitol Records, uh, I'll take you back a little further than that. Um, I was discovered by Miss Melba Moore in a little club on the east side by the New York Freddy's in New York City. And uh, she came to the show, loved me, screaming and hollering. I'm like, boy, she's talented, but she's crazy. <laughs> um, but we had such a wonderful time she, just meeting each other. And so I knew that Melba was going to be somebody that I wanted to be connected with. So I went on the road singing background for Melba. I would eventually write songs for Melba Moore. And then on my birthday, October 2nd, 1983, her management company, production company, Hush Productions was the name of the company, they put me in the studio and said, we're going to make a record on you. And then we're going to shot the record. So on October 2nd, which is my birthday, if you'd like to say yes, you can. <laughs> on October 2nd, I started the Rock Me Tonight album. But although Rock Me Tonight was the last song I recorded, You and My Lady was the first song mm. written by Mr. Barry Eastman. So we went into the studio and we recorded this album. And my producer, Paul Lawrence, who wrote Rock Me Tonight, said, we're so glad this album was a success because if it wasn't, you would hate your birthday for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's right? true. <laughs> so let me listen to say, yeah. I'm still enjoying my birthdays. Excellent. You know, so um, the studio work is incredible, and I love working in the studio, but I love more so live. Yeah, can you feel the energy? And like you said, you like to see when the when the yeah. man grabs his, his lady's hand. That's right, that's right. I like to keep people together. Uh, I'm a romantic. I just like romance. That's why I continue to sing love songs. It's, it's what I love to do. Uh, it's what I do best, actually. And when I'm not singing, I'm a little depressed because I like to sing. Yeah. So um, I used to have a dog, and the dog would be howling, like, shut up sometimes, <laughs> you know. But that was the dog, but right, she loved me. Right. But... Um, it's just in my blood, and when I'm not able to do it, I'm a different kind of character, but I love to sing. Oh, well, we love that you love to share your Thank singing. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Look, I'm going <clears throat> to be honest with you and our audience on here. Let's we heard right. you. We're coming. Mm -hmm. That song, Jam Tonight, was in my head oh, just replaying. I had, I had something to do, and I'm trying <laughs> to concentrate on what my task was, but I'm wow. here, Jam Tonight, Listen. and you are my lady. I'm like, and, wow. and I'm sitting next to Mr. And here Pink. I come. And here right. you come. Poof. <laughs> Poof. Well, you know, I have to um, tell you about Jam Tonight. Jam Tonight I wrote when I lived in the projects uptown, and uh, Paul, I, I was in his group, LJE. Long shows ensemble, and so he gave us all a task. He says, "Well, we're going to be doing a show at a rectory for older people, and you know we need to have some music that they can swing and dance to." And so I came up with this. Dun, 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 dun. And then I said, "Well, they can move to that." What I heard. Actually, now <laughs> it's easy for me to move to as I get older. I was, you know, but I came up with the "Tell me why you." came here was it just to sit and stare now don't you wanna jam tonight and it worked and it yes, worked it and it worked <laughs> and jam tonight was actually recorded by a guy by the name of howard johnson howard johnson you would know his record he made a record called ooh so fine so, so fine, fine. Blow your mind. Mind. Well, I'm singing on that album because <laughs> oh. I was a background singer. So how would we record it first? And then Paul said, well, why don't we redo it on your record? And that's Jam Tonight really became a success after that. You know, so Jam Tonight is just a, I can't leave a stage without that swing. Oh, and yeah. it's the official uh, Steppers song in Chicago. Oh, Chicago really? Lunch. That's right. That's amazing. Yeah. That song is everything. There we go. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> so you, your career has spanned over decades. Three. Three decades. Yeah. Three in one year. Three in one year. That's right. Okay. That's right. So can you tell me some of the changes that you've seen in the music industry mm -hmm. from when you started until present day? Well, of course, social media and 
has changed a lot for music as well, radio stations and their programming differently. You know, the day of uh, going into a radio station and the jock plays whatever he wants on your album, those days are gone. Now everything is programmed. You get a sheet and that's what you play. Um, I kind of like the freedom of a jock saying, Freddie Jackson album, we're going to play whatever we want. Right, right. But now things are more structured. But I'm in love with radio. You know why? Because I'm not worried about, I don't have to worry about being played. I think more than New Jacks do because someone said, Freddie, you're in the greatest place in your life. 11 number one records. Radio stations are going to always play you. And when once they broke it down to me, I said, hmm. Shut up, Freddie. You're in a good <laughs> sp uh, place. But what I'm enjoying about the music scene right now is watching the change. And, you know, that's life. Mm -hmm. Life is in progressions. In progressions. And so, although it's a little, in some cases, it comes and goes too quick for a lot of artists, and a lot of them may not have the longevity, and I'm grateful for 31 yes. years. Yes. Um, and I'm glad that I I wasn't a one hit wonder. That I do have something that's sticking because I yeah. I have a boundary of work. Um, I enjoy watching the new jacks come and the ones that special like the Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. I think she's gonna have a long span of career. Hamilton, Anthony Hamilton's, the Jill Scotts, those guys I really enjoy a lot, a lot. Uh, and I think their careers are going to just be huge. Christina Aguilera's mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, it goes on and on. Great singers, you know. Um, I, I watch them come, and sometimes I watch them go. But the ones that are supposed to stick and stay in it, they lear they've, they're learning their craft of their act, of their art, artistry, excuse me. I had a, a, a little sit down with one of the guys from Boys to Men. Oh, one day, yes. and one day he said, "I've got to tell you something, Mr. Jackson. When I heard you and my lady, and I heard how you sang that, he said, I said to the guys, I want to sing just like him. I said, man, you said that about me. He says, you yes. don't understand what your voice did mm. for me. So I am happy that in the ever changing time of music, that what I have done." has affected someone. And so therefore, I hope that the music industry will continue to educate those who want to be like the Freddie Jackson, just like I wanted to be like the Bobby Gaines and Sam Cooks and the Luther Vandross, and I get my shot. Yes. So it changes, but and it has changed, but there's always room for change. Okay, so we've seen some collaborations between artists in different genres. We mm -hmm. saw uh, Tony Bennett and uh, Gaga. Got Lady Gaga. I love that. We had an award show where Lady Gaga was in Metallica. Mm -hmm. Can, is there anybody that you would like to collaborate that might be in a different genre? Mm, I would like to sing a song with Andre Bocelli. Oh. I would love, love ever in my life. I think he's just amazing. <laughs> I think he's amazing. What an incredible voice, the tone, it all oh, is just so fantastic. That would make my day. That would truly make my day. I think it would make all of our days. Oh, we man. we got to see it. And I can learn it. I can learn I can learn it in Italian, whatever it is. And it, it can be in, I don't care what language it is, just as long as I had a chance to sing with him. And my other great, the greatest voice that I emulated as I grew up was Johnny Mathis. And I uh, met Mr. Mathis yes. and he kissed me on the cheek and said, you're going to be great. And so I told my friend, I'm going to wash my face for about a week. <laughs> you know, he was going off golfing. We were somewhere in, uh, in, uh, in California doing a, a show and he was staying in the same place where there was a, a golfing resort. And, uh, and his manager said, Mr. Mathis, Freddie Jackson, he says, oh, did you my lady guy? And he grabbed me, he says, you're special. I'm like, whoa, the kids yeah. of Johnny Mathis. <laughs> so those two guys, because they're just wonderful, acclimated um, vocalists, 
you know, that kind of stuff. I would, I, I would fly to, even today, to see what Johnny Mouth is. Okay, so we spent some time reminiscing about some of your earlier work, but mm -hmm. you have some new music out, don't you? Almost certainly. Freddie Jackson has a new single out. It's called One Night. Um, that's going to radio in May, but my album is going to the world uh, in June, and the album is called Love Signals. I'm sending love signals <laughs> all across the world. The world needs a little love. It's a message song. Okay. And it speaks about going off to war, war and not knowing what we're fighting for, and that's a lot of people's children. But they're being sent off to fight a war, and some of, most of them are senseless wars, and many of them are not returning home, or the Orlando Massacre. I just, they actually, I started like, we started doing that song right after the massacre. I'm like, people just going out to have a good time. Yeah. No matter what your gender is, no matter what your race is, how tall, big, fat, skinny you yeah. are, you have the right to live, yeah. you know? And so I felt that it was important for me to send some love signals. And I think it's important for all of us all across the world to send love signals. And that signal is simply peace. Send peace and say love more. We are texting XOXOXO <laughs> and pressing send. But we need to say it and people need to hear the word love. Yes. Or I love you. Mm -hmm. Tone is very important. A lot of people don't understand how important it is for tone. Texting and emailing is fine. But every now and then, I really want to hear you laugh. Yes. I don't want you to tell me to laugh out loud. I really want you to laugh out loud, and I want to remember it and hear it. And I think it's important for us to also share those words, I love you, and to say them because tomorrow is not promised to you. So that's what Love Signals is about. But then I've got the regular, come here, let me hold and kiss you, and let me tell you how it's supposed <laughs> to be done. Stuff where all I want to do is spend my time oh, with you. Yes. And, you know, all that stuff. AKA baby making music. Baby all. making midnight <laughs> music. I got a few of those too. I've grown up a little, and I've told you how to do it nice and slow and give you some tasty love. Yeah, you've got all that. That's in the can. But I've soothed my soul as I got a little older, and the rhythm and blues is a little calmer for me right now. And it's all right, because we all go through channels in our life. Right. And the channel in my life is a little more peaceful. Even in romance, it's a little more peaceful. I'm more focused when it comes to my relationships, where I was a little disarrayed, so I was seeing things like, I could use a little love. I ain't telling all my business. <laughs> I'm not telling it all like I used to. You keep it some close to the vest. Yeah, hello. To that nice jacket you Hello, have, that's right? what I'm trying to say. <laughs> now you'll be out promoting this album soon. Where can where can our viewers find you? Some of the dates, some of the places. Twitter, um, Facebook, FreddieJackson.com, everything. You can just Google and everything. I'm I'm gonna be where you are. Where your cell phone is, <laughs> where, it, where it's at, you know where Freddie Jackson is. But we are in the studio in New Jersey. I've got a brand new band. My band is young and full of energy. And uh, they also co-wrote a song on my album called Find A Way. And they're absolutely incredible. The name of the group is called Jatan. Wonderful bunch of guys. And so I got good energy with me yeah. right now. New management, new publicity, and all kind of stuff is going on. New, 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 I'm new. I'm feeling your new energy jacket. right now. Oh. New jacket, new your hair, energy, everything. New, new teeth, all <laughs> kind of stuff is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, but at any rate, a lot of newness is going on in, in my life, and I'm feeling good. And with this CD, I'm hoping that what it does, and my intent in making this CD, was because I wanted to just do R&B music. I didn't want to make I didn't want to make an excuse for it. What it was, it's R&B. No matter how many times people try to say R&B is dead, it ain't dead until. It's buried. It is not buried yet. There's incredible R&B that's surfacing. 
some people are killing it a little bit. <laughs> and so I'm like going clear to the heart, you yes. know. Come back. It's not, you know. And that's what this CD is about. I intentionally did everything that I did on the first album, and that was remove myself from however great I thought I was in the 11 number one records. I started this album the way I started the first one, like I didn't know what was going to happen. And it is really showing. The single is being received so well. I got a call before I came to see you guys today, and a program director that never makes a telephone call to uh, anyone called and said, Freddie Jackson, I want to say thank you for this record. This is a program director. Oh. Okay. He says, I want to say thank you for making a record like this. He says, this record is what radio needs and what the music industry needs because it's a complete record. And he says, when I put it on, I automatically felt safe that it was something that I knew. And I said, you know what? If I don't get anything else from anybody else, I accept this from you because that was my intention in making this Love Sickness album. And so I'm hoping that when it reaches you, that when it reaches you, that it will touch your soul just the same way. Wow. Thank you so much. This has been such an honor. Everybody, time. go get that single, listen to the video, follow him on Instagram and That's Twitter, so, yep. find out where he's going to be, and get there to see Mr. Jackson. And remember, it's the one night tour, so don't miss it because we may not get two. So get that ticket because it's <laughs> one night. That's it. There you have it. There you have it. Thank you so, so very much. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, you've been watching the interview with Keisha Wilson and Freddie Jackson. And Freddie Jackson is the, probably one of the main reasons why we have these millennials, if you think about it. <laughs> right? You are my lady. Rock me tonight. Um, um, just a touch of love. So many songs by Freddie Jackson that I've loved for forever, so keep it locked. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of What's the 411 TV, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatsthe411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Check us out on our social media outlets, and we may just mention you on the show. I'm Courtney Rashawn, and on behalf of Onika McLean, thanks for spending your time with What's the 411 TV. One.